It's called a clean energy, but nuclear power produces potentially dangerous waste that'll be around long after we're gone. Welcome to the municipality of Concordon, Ontario, your typical small town. The majority of the town works in the nuclear industry, so much so this place has been called a nuclear oasis. Just outside of town sits the Western Waste Management Facility. There's enough nuclear waste stored here to fill about 40 Olympic swimming pools. And nuclear leftovers are not your typical industrial waste. The radioactive decay has to occur over hundreds of thousands of years in order to make that material safe, if you will, to handle under normal practices. So the lifespan of the waste is very long. It looks a lot like a morgue. Those silver caps are the tops of steel pipes encased in concrete storing intermediate level nuclear waste. These smaller uh, caps, those are called in-ground containers or tile holes. And we have quite a few of them on the site. Low level waste, things like clothes, equipment and materials that have been exposed to radiation are sorted, bagged, and sent to the incinerator to be turned into ash. Everything is scanned and monitored for radiation levels. Next, they're put into crates and stored above ground. Then there's the high-level waste, the really toxic stuff. Each one of those white containers weighs 70 tons. That's 384 fuel bundles each. Just one fuel bundle can power a home for 100 years. I'm Brad Ellsworth, I'm the acting manager at Western Used Fuel Dry Storage Facility. There's no harm in touching them, there's no, we're standing beside them as we speak. There's uh, very little dose coming off them and a lot of fuel stored inside them. They do give off heat, but fine to touch. This room doesn't even need to be heated in the winter. Each dry storage container or DSC has to be closely monitored because nuclear waste is not 100% predictable. Every fuel bundle is a little different that comes out, so every DSC we can fingerprint to make sure there's different uh, uh, a gamma spec on them. We also are looking at uh, weld profiles, which are all unique. Um, one way to make sure that we're, no one is tampering with the DSCs. It's like being in a top secret lab or lair, sterile and bright. There are over a thousand containers in this room. Each DSC will last about 50 years. In terms of long-term storage, this is interim, as I mentioned, long-term storage is where the uh, waste management organization is looking at that and what we do with the final disposal of these. Kept at the surface, waste is vulnerable to weather and the environment, and this is only meant to be temporary. A proposal has been made to permanently bury the low and intermediate level waste here underground in a deep geological repository. The DGR will be 680 meters below ground, curling into multiple layers of rock shale and limestone. That is deeper than the CN Tower or the Empire State Building and Eiffel Tower combined. There will be dozens of rooms housing thousands of containers of low and intermediate level waste with an intricate network of tunnels and elevator shafts. It'll be the size of several football fields and the first of its kind in Canada. But is it the right choice for handling nuclear remains? We need a deep geologic repository because that is the permanent solution for the disposal of this waste. This room is full of rocks from that site that have been dug up, studied and tested to see if the geology could withstand the radioactive materials. This is a sample of the rock, again, from the 680 meter uh, depth underneath the site. It is extremely well suited for containing radionuclides. Um, it has very low permeability. Water can't come in and water can't go out very easily, if you will. So again, it contains the radionuclides within the rock. The DGR will be one kilometer from Lake Huron, a vital source of fresh water for millions of people. An accident or contamination could be catastrophic. From a geological perspective, the repository is separated by the lake by 450 million years. A molecule of water at the repository level would take hundreds of thousands to millions of years to make it to the surface. 
The industry says this is the best option, the only option, but the project has not yet been approved. Still, it's caused a lot of talk around town. There are a lot of questions around nuclear waste because when compared to other forms of power, nuclear energy hasn't been around that long. What to do with the waste is a work in progress. Mary Ann Eady says the environment was her first concern. I wanted to know uh, all about the DGR, its proximity to Lake Huron, was that a factor? Is it safer above the ground where it is and has been for decades? Or can they enhance the safety even more by putting it 650 meters below the ground? And so that's what the scientists have studied. They have determined, yes, they could enhance the safety even more. It promises to isolate and contain waste securely for generations to come. But the DGR will cost over $2 billion, and a federal environmental assessment is still underway. The day I stepped on this land before we bought it, the feeling that surged through me is this is where I want to die. This land completes me. Oh, I, I was a supporter of nuclear power. I, I, thought, I thought it's the savior of the nation. We don't need to be burning oil and gas and everything else to create electricity. Nuclear power, I, I mean, it's impressive. Eugene built this place with his wife, Anne. They now run a wool shop out of their farm and think the DGR is simply not necessary. I like not so much to be against the DGR, but to be for reason. When it costs $648 million, to keep the waste on the surface, and $2.65 billion to put it underground. And they say it is perfectly safe. What we're doing on the surface right now is safe. It's safe for the long term. What's the real story behind this? For the long term, Ann and Eugene installed solar panels in 2010 as a way to contribute to the future of renewable energy. So I built, I designed our house originally as a passive solar house. Uh, I, I think solar energy is the way we need to go for the future. That's not to say it's pure without problems. There are problems, but they're not as severe as most other forms of energy. To Eugene, burying this kind of waste is not the way to go. He feels like putting it underground is a bigger risk to the lake and to future generations than keeping it where it is. We have had an exquisite life here and continue to have an exquisite life. On the other hand, we don't need to live irresponsibly. And I fear that the industry is just too casual about the impacts of ionizing radiation on public health. The truth is everything we consume, including power, produces waste wherever it comes from. And whether it's hidden deep underground or kept in plain sight, nuclear waste isn't going away anytime soon. It's the legacy of going nuclear.